Oh, this is Nick back with another video and in this video I'm going to be rebuilding my Autolite 2100 two barrel carburetor and just to let y'all know this is a manual choke this is not a automatic choke so if you have an automatic choke you're going to have to find another video but yeah so anyway I'm going to get into uh, rebuilding this carb Last video I did, which was the teardown, y'all can go see that if you want. I wasn't sure if there was any ball valves, but there is one, and it goes right down in this hole right here, which I mean is typical. There's a screw, you know, the um, we call these venturis, yeah, venturis, yeah. So, anyway. I'm going to start putting this thing together here and then the, the last thing I'm going to be doing before I put the air horn back on is I'm going to be putting in the new float. I got a new float and I'm going to be measuring that and all that stuff because you know it needs special measurement but other than that the rest of this stuff. Also when you run the uh, stuff through cleaner, I, that carb cleaner I had in the previous video you have to rinse that off of water and if you don't make sure everything's dry then you're gonna have a little here and there surface rust and I got all these screws here and I did my best to get most of the rust out of the threads so that it's not gonna interfere with anything but yeah I'm also gonna have to jump back and forth here from the friggin diagram because I don't remember exactly everything I did when I took this off but um, I think I'll go ahead and start with the bed cherries first because that's easy it's just a gasket and then the ball valve thingamajig and yep also the screw on this carburetor that holds the whole venturi assembly in place there's actually a pin in this screw and it goes in like that so make sure you don't lose that here I am dropping it so yeah see so, yeah, I'm gonna get you know this carb kit I got you know they didn't have the diagram for the manual choke apparently I guess the manual choke is some kind of rare carb you know there's not much of a diagram showing I think there is one I did find one on Google but that's about it I got this carb kit from the carb doctor he's in Lake Jackson Texas he's not a sponsor or anything but I got a carb from him before for a carb kit from him before for another carb and it worked out great there wasn't anything that I needed you know those so this should be good here of course got dumbass plastic shit can't just pull it apart You know, and I studied this diagram as well, and there's just one, one ball valve. That's about it. You know, like I said, this is the diagram for the autom automatic choke, but it's like right there, and there's the pin that holds it down. So, yep. So I got two here because I'm. I'm just double checking, making sure. Yep, so you drop. So, well, of course, I gotta find the gasket first. Sorry, I'm trying to retrace my memory. Yep. 
and it looks like we only got one gasket for the bench cherries. And they kind of made it nice and convenient with this carb where you just put the gasket on and then you just pop the thing in and then the hole is big enough that you just drop the ball valve down there and and then you put the screw in. This gasket's a little bit of a challenge. Gotta There's this like things here that you gotta like pop it onto and just make sure I don't got any other crazy caskets. Yeah, this thing's a little bit sooty. And I mean I rinsed it off, this is how it came out of the cleaner. And I could, you know, go the extra mile. I mean there's soot in there, so it's just it's better off to, um, and it, this ain't going to be a perfect restoration car, but this truck itself is pretty rough, so I'm just going to put it together the way it is right now. So there we go there. Then we got ball valve. And of course, make sure it's down there. It's down there. It should get pushed down there with a screw. But it's down there. Y'all probably can't see it that well. Also, I'm indoors. So I got AC and I got a light. And we don't have cicada noises like the last video. So we're good. <laughs> so anyway. That's the shit I was worried about, that freaking thing. Would fall down in to cause a problem. So I guess the thing was is when I took this thing apart, it was so crappy in there. There was a bunch of dirt that was literally just holding this pin in. So now that I've taken the pin out and it's all clean, this thing will just slide right out. So definitely got to be careful of that. You don't want to lose this pin. So there we go, just like that. Now I can. This is really the only screw on this carb that requires a flathead screwdriver. I also had one guy comment that, you know, okay, the jets should come out after the cleaning. Well, sadly, that didn't happen. They just got worse. So these jets that are designed to be taken out with a flathead screwdriver, they suck. They always will suck. Well, in my case, I mean, I had a other carburetor with the same kind of jet. You got to take it out with a flathead screwdriver. There's no other options. And the shit just kept getting worse and worse and worse. And same thing here. They decided to put brass jets in there with a aluminum bowl. And then they get stuck. I don't know. Yet again, I don't know if it's a friggin' Texas thing for the jets to be stuck in the carb. This is like the second carb in this state that I've had. 
where they're stuck. <laughs> I don't know. But um, the ones that require a socket, I've had better luck with those. Those, those seem to come out good because you got a better grip on it. But with stupid flathead screwdriver, you know, you're just making it worse. And so in the future, those things will probably have to be drilled out or something. And right now, I just want to be driving my truck again. So I'm just going to leave them as is because they're fine right now. And I don't have any brand new jets to put in there anyway. So just going to let it be. So now I got my Venturi's in there. And now I think I'm going to flip it over and take care of the thingamajigger that goes right here. That thing, you know, this this thing is cool. So this uh, I guess apparently on my carb I guess all carbs have like a power bypass jet thing that has a spring like this, you know. And the other carb I was working on had a smaller version of this, except yet again, you know, this one you had to take out with a flathead and it wouldn't come out. And it was in the bottom, directly in the bottom of the bowl. But what Ford did with this carb, which I, I like, is that they just took... They made it like this, and they put it on the bottom so it's out of the bowl. And then you just take this cover off with the four screws. And then you just take a, a, a wrench, and this comes right out. Perfect. And there's also a gasket on this. So i got to find that gasket. And this looks to be the only gasket here. And it goes just like that. And then you'd screw that in there. Move some of this stuff out of the way. Yeah, again, you know, there's some rust on the ends of these doesn't bother me too much. I couldn't find a socket that would work with this, so I'm just using an adjustable wrench, and I don't want to break this thing. So far there's no special adjustments that need to be made. I also don't want to break the gasket over torquing because I can't stand people who over torque shit and then the shit gets stuck and then it's like a catastrophe. So, you know, like that's the thing with those jets. You want to be light with those. You don't want to just hammer them in there because then they have a higher chance of getting stuck. So, I think. That's good enough, you know. There's no torque specs on a carb, so yeah. So anyway, then we got the fancy cover, and the cover itself has a gasket, I think, or maybe that's a different cover. Check that. Yep, mm -hmm. a gasket on top of a gasket. It's totally overbuilt. <laughs> But it's good enough. Looking at it from this side, the little yeah, these tabs go in towards the carb. And then I forgot which size screws these were. I guess they were that size screws. Not that giant one, because there's only like two two sizes of screws on this carb. And obviously that's not threading in, so it's obviously smaller ones. And then 
bring out my screwdriver. And of course, I gotta drive this shit home yet. Until I know I got a lined gasket. Which looks good. I'm good for this, yeah. No other gaskets. And this I'll show you all. This goes later. Some of you all might know already. It's like a combined rubber gasket and rubber thing. Just make sure the screws all, aren't all mixed up. I have all of them. Right, they're all the same. So that's how you take care of that. I'll find the proper name for that. So it's 48. What do they call that? They call that a valve. Economizer. What? What the heck is this thing? Economizer. Yeah, economizer. Almost couldn't say that, but that's what's in there. I guess um, it's different from a power bypass jet. Because you know, I was getting that. The power bypass jet is from a sh is on a Stromberg car. The economizer is on this Ford 2100 car. And there we go. Look at that. We got nice brass thing right there. It's cool. Now we're gonna move over to this thing over here. And it's kind of like a, I'll have to get the term on that. That's why I, I like having the diagram because it gives you all the, the terms. Well, they're crazy terms for what they did. So that thing, so there's a rubber thing. And there is clips in here, because this thing, if you all know, if you all watched the last video, there was a clip on here, and that bounced off and went off into the oblivion. And then this rubber thing, these things get old. You try yanking that out and it breaks, that's what happened to me. So this one, you gotta pop it in. Somehow, I 
That thing is like the most frustrating thing on this carb. It's popping that thing in. And that thing is called 44 valve pump inlet check valve. That's what they call that thing. Okay. All right. So I got that in. Definitely got to be careful because even on the new ones, they might break. I made sure that this one doesn't break and I got it in. There is a rubber gasket part on it, and that has to pop through the hole, and it holds it into place. And what I find is that, you know, you can pull on this rubber end, you know, this end in the bolt, but you got to be very careful with it, not to pull it real hard, because then it'll break. And what I find is that if you put it in at an angle, and you use your finger out here to push on it and you pull it up it pops in you know you pull it up at an angle and it pops in so you know of course y'all can't see that even if I had the camera on because I got my hands like this so you have to take that one on your own and don't break it because then you'll have to go looking for another one So you get that rubber thing in and then there's the spring now with this kit it didn't come with a spring so I made sure you know you always save all the original parts in case something's not in the kit and the spring goes in like that with the big end in little end out then you got this cover here. I'll show you all in a moment which direction it goes, right way it goes on. Now I'm looking for this thing of course. Now this thing is the most important thing. That, this tab here faces outward and this part faces inward towards the spring because there's, there's no way that would work so that's going to be the biggest challenge here because then you got to suppress this thing <laughs> so that it doesn't explode and you lose your spring somewhere <laughs> So, yeah, and then of course you gotta have your screws ready. I gotta make sure I got got four little screws. Yet again, it's the little screws. So these two doors here have little screws, not big screws. The big screws hold the air horn down. That's what the big screws are for. So you separate big screws, put all your little screws together, and there should be a total of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight little screws and four big screws. So that would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Twelve screws total. So yeah, let's get into this thing. And you might want to point the spring towards you so that at least it hit you in the face maybe you might know where it landed on the ground instead of it launching the other direction you have no idea where the hell it went and then of course this thing now we got to understand well which way does this go because I have no idea just to make sure Oh, 
there's only one way in this one, and it's like that. Because then you have this mechanism here for the throttle, and it hooks in there. I'm going to be right back because I'm going to study the options because there's actually two holes here. And if I go back to my video, I can see what hole it was in because I thought it was stuck together and it got loose and fell off. And now I don't know what the setting is. So I'm going to be back to check the setting. So I got an answer from my handy video. It's the inner hole. So we're we're good, we're, we're set, and apparently you have to have this thing hooked up and then compress all this, and what a freaking mess. Or maybe it would be better to just unhook this, I think. Should be able to rehook that back. You know, that would be dumb if. Yeah, also, the other thing is this acts like a lever. So it's got a, a little bump in there. There goes my screw. And it taps on this right here. So that's why this is outward. And when I try to put it on with this lever, the lever wants to pull back and keep this like this. So we obviously want that up so it makes it easier to put this thing in. One screw in there. Let's get those threaded. There we go. Just like that. That's how it's supposed to function. I'll be right back because apparently worst nightmare is happening. This thing has to be well. Okay, never mind. Don't ask me. This clip right here for this whole thing was a brand new clip in the kit, so I might as well use the new clip. Take this old clip out, hook the thing back in and put it back together. So I'm going to get into that and I knew this thing this thing was a challenge from the beginning.
And that's why you get a new clip, because that thing broke. So, got the accelerator pump working. That clip is uh, right the way it is. It's got a star on there that grabs and holds this rod in place. So there we go. I got that together. And then I'm just getting down to the last things here. Now the next thing would be this piece that the pin goes in, the, uh, the needle valve, so open that up, it just goes like that, and a little gasket goes there, and it slides in here, that threads in there, that's what I meant, and there's a socket for it. This socket here is three eighths. So we're good there. It's nice and secure for the valve here. So I'm back, just looking over everything, make sure I got uh, everything right and that I'm not missing anything. This piece right here, which is for the uh, fuel line, there's no gasket for it. And I just wanted to double check that, but you just screw it in and that's how that works and it's right here. Yeah, let's tighten that up. Now I'm going to be working on the last thing here, which is the float. And they give you two options of bars here. There's a bar that secures it. The bar that came out of this carb had the bump on it. So I'm going to keep the bump. And instead of using this straight bar, it's like an, an option. And then, of course, the needle valve has a little clip that just slips on like that now you got your little hook and then now it's just a matter of sliding the pin in that and the needle valve hangs on like that then you put it in oh of course you got to make sure your pin is aligned with inside here and then this clip goes down here and then it wraps onto the fitting that I threaded in there
bit tricky. And of course, you don't want to bend this. That's how you secure the flow. That's looking good. I'm making sure it's not rubbing up against the wall of the bowl. There, looks good. There's nothing real wrong with that. And that's it for now. And then I'm gonna be getting next clip, gonna be getting into adjusting it. But um or really instead of spending all that time pretty much you know they give you a ruler here you go find your measurement in the diagram oh there's a, a chart on the back of the paper and then you determine it and then you just like put the ruler here down in there like that and then you just eyeball it the best you can and it's from the top of the measurement Is that at the top of the float? So yeah, so I'll I'll be back when this float is adjusted, and then putting the air horn on, and then it'll be ready to go, so I can put it on my truck and drive it again. So I'm back. I got the float adjusted. One thing. Yeah, I'm going to explain it real quick how it goes. So first of all, you, you put this on a level surface. Then you grab your ruler that you got. And you grab a piece of thin metal. I mean, apparently there's a special gauge tool for this. You can probably find it online if you want to go that route. But just a piece of metal like this right across helps. And then... You take the, uh, the total, you know, this thing is in 30 seconds. And the data table on here, the measurement I got from the data table from the paperwork was in 64. So I had to convert that. So it was like 31 64, just converted that into 16 30 seconds. And that's, you know, half an inch. So then, of course, how the measurement goes is it's from... The top of the float to the top of the bowl so you put your ruler in there and you measure it and then what you do is you know you keep measuring it of course but how you adjust it is you hold the float down and you bend this tang right here upward and you just keep doing that and then every time you measure it you press it down so it's fully seated and then you measure it until you get it and so that's what I did here I just kept doing it till we got 16 30 seconds eyeballed and that should be good enough but my truck is obviously gonna do a lot friggin better without this friggin mess of a float in there it's got a nice solid float here and now I can continue with the air horn. Now all I gotta do is find the gasket for the air horn. Of course they have like three different gaskets or two different gaskets in the kit. You know, you compare that with your old gasket. See, got these air horn gaskets, two different kinds. So I can pull out my old air horn gasket and it has the holes. You know, luckily this is easy to determine so this gasket here has got the holes, so I just use the one with the holes. 
Now, I don't know. Maybe this thing back in the past had this as the one, you know, because this carpet has been rebuilt before, but I'm just going to stick with what was in there. So, yep. And then you just got an extra one to throw away or whatever. And you line up the holes. Let's see how this one sat. Things might, might not be precisely cut. This hole's a little off, even though I lined the rest of them, but it's good enough. And I'm going to flip this around. And it just don't go either. Either way. So, be good here. Actually, it does have a certain way it goes like that. Because if I do that, you know, these things are tricky as hell. If I go like that, then this is left off. So, it actually, it has to go like this. And then, of course, I always check, make sure. You know, this rod here for the air filter doesn't have to, you know, be in there when you're putting the air horn back on. You can always just run it in through there when you're ready to put the air filter on. This back end face here. There, and now you just line up your screws. Of course, you know, make sure all your edges here are clean, which I mean, they're clean, they're all gasket free. The rest is just wear marks. And you grab your big screws. Got that threaded. Carefully not digging, messing up here. Well, of course, this hole here is actually for your tag here.
good here. Make sure I haven't left anything out so far. Nope, last thing is just this. And I have clips here to replace that clip. I think it goes in like that. Make sure that you know because this is your your final this is your choke control right here so this is very important not to mess the head up. So I'll be right back just to make sure because I think how this goes is this goes down like this it's supposed to be like that and then you bring the lever into here that's not looking like that's the right way because then this thing is left up like that so I think it has to go down like this. Fumbly freaking ghetto thing. Ugh, it's a janky thing. Design. that in and you bring it down So I guess when you step on the gas pedal, this opens up like that, so then it's easier for this mess of a thing to do its job. So I guess we're good there. And then it's just a matter of grabbing the clip. Now I'm going to test there's two different types of clips in here. Which one is going to fit and be better. Obviously that's too big. So I got this one little 
clip here. That looks like it'll be the right size. Yeah, so I can mess with this clip all night, but there we go. I got it good enough so it's hooked on there and I'll press it down a little bit more later, but Looks good. So yeah, and then of course you got that fancy thing and then this, whatever, it's all messed up. Yeah, there we go. So that's a auto light manual choke 2100 carb rebuild and I'll see y'all in the next video. Peace.